In this video, we're going to take a look at linear relations. So I have a graph here, and I have some, some numbers down here on what we call the x-axis, the horizontal axis here. And on my vertical axis, which we usually assign the variable y to, I have some numbers here as well. And then on the graph, I have a series of dots, which represents values in this relation. Now this is called a linear relation simply because all of the points here lie on a straight line. I think you could see that. I could draw a line that would go through essentially all of those points, like so. Um, so that's what makes this a linear relation. But I'm going to just remove the line so that we can look at these series of, of points here. So we're going to look at linear relations, so the points, the data points that we're going to look at are all going to lie in a straight line. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this information of, from this graph and we're going to put these points in a table of values. So the table of values would simply look like, like this. We'll do a vertical one here. And usually we just separate the two columns between the x values and the y values. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take this information of the graph from the graph and make a list of the various data points. So I'm going to start with this first point right here. And I'm going to, I'm going to tell what the x value is. So here's where 0, 0 is on the graph. So this first point right here has an x value of 1. So when x is 1, and looking at this point here, its y value which is the value in the vertical axis, would be 1. So this point here has the coordinates 1 for x and 1 for y. Now if we move to our next point on the graph, the x value, so looking down here, the x value is 2. The y value, looking across here, would be 3. So x is 2 and y is 3. Looking at this third point here, x value would be 3, y value would be 5, and so on. We can continue the, the, uh, the uh, points here. So this one would have an x value of 4 and a y value of 7, and so on. We'll do these last two. x is 5 and y is 9, and finally my last point here would have an x value of 6, yes, and the y value would be 11 here. Okay, so I've made a table of values. This is a vertical one. We could also do a horizontal one. And it would look like so. And we would simply have these same x values. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And our corresponding y values. 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. It doesn't matter whether you use a vertical uh, table of values or a horizontal table of values. Whatever, whatever you are, whatever you like best. Uh, I'm going to use a vertical one here. So let's let's look at this again. Here's my table of values. And one of the things, one of the expectations that you should be able to have in this course is you should be able to start recognizing patterns in your table of values. So when I look at this, it looks to me like every time x is going up 1. At the same time, y is going up 2. So y jumps from 1 to 3, 3 to 5, 5 to 7, 7 to 9, sorry, se yeah, 7 to 9, and then 9 to 11. So without even looking at my graph and seeing where the next point would be, I think we could probably say from our data that the next point on here would be a 7 for x, because we add one more, that seems to fit our pattern. And on this side, we would get 13, because we are adding 2 every time on this side. So the expectation here is, given a graph with some points, you should be able to construct a table of values. And from the table of values, we should be able to recognize a pattern. So every time x increases by 1, y is increasing by 2, and that's the pattern that we see from this graph.
All right, let's look at this example here. Here I've got a graph which represents the profit made from selling flowers. So let's say you were selling flowers to raise money for something. We have a graph here that represents the amount of money made or the profit uh, made by selling flowers. So you need to be able to analyze this graph and, um, and come up with some of the patterns that we see here. Let's make a table of values here first. So remember, um, I'm going to do the vertical one here. So X represents the information on this axis. I'm not going to use X because in this word problem, this is number of flowers. So I'm going to use N for the number of flowers. But that's the information on this axis. And on my vertical axis, I have money made. So I will use um, M for money. So N is the number of flowers. M is the amount of money I make. So I have a point right here. So zero, if I sell zero flowers, I make zero dollars. So zero, zero. Um, this next point here, the X value, or N, number of flowers, is one. The amount of money that you made is three. And next point here is two and six and three and nine. And I have another point here, 4 and 12. So I've made a table of values here that represents this information. So let's see if we can see the pattern that there is on the graph. So every time this seems to be going up by 1, going up by 1, this appears to be going up by 3 every time. So I could say then that as the number of flowers increases by one, the money made increases by three, or by three, three dollars in this case. Um, so we could answer some other questions too. Another question might be, so how much money is made for each flower that is sold? Well, we can see that from our pattern, that each flower that is sold means we make an additional three dollars. That's the linear relationship here. Um, what other questions could we could we ask? We could ask this question: um, How much money is made if n is? What if we wanted to know how much money would we make if we sold ten flowers? Well, I think we can see here that the numbers that we're getting on this side are three times bigger than the numbers on this side. So if you multiply one by three, we're going to get three. If you multiply two by three, we're going to get six. If you multiply three by three, we're going to get nine. Four times three is 12. So it would make sense that if I sold 10 flowers, 10 times three would be $30. So if we were to move this along here to 10, we would have a point way up here where the Y value or the money made is $30. So if we sold 10 flowers, we would make $30. Now the other thing that we need to consider too, so on this graph here we have a series of points. Is it possible to have a point in between these two values? So this has an X value of 1 or n, I'm using n on this scale, n is 1, and here n is 2. Is it possible to have a point at, say, 1 and a half? Like, would it make sense to have a point right here? Because that would, in theory, lie on this line 2 that connects these points. Well, that'll depend on the problem, on the word problem that you've got. So this is the profit made selling flowers. So if we're going to have a point between 1 and 2, does it make sense to sell one and a half flowers? And I would argue that no, it's not. You can't sell half a flower when you're doing a fundraiser. So you can't have points in between, on this example, say one and two. The only, the only data points we could have are zero flowers or one flower or two flowers or three flowers. We can't have 
say, one and a half flowers or 2.3 flowers. But if you looked at this example, so this example here is the elevation or the height above ground of a falling object. So looking at our points here, down on this axis, the x-axis, we have time in seconds and height in meters. So let's say you dropped a rock or a rock is falling and it's falling at a hundred, it's, it starts at a hundred meters here at zero seconds. After one second, it's at 90. After two seconds, it's at 80. At three seconds, it's at 70 meters. So it's getting closer and closer to Earth as we drop it from whatever, a bridge or something. Um, in this example, is it possible to tell what the height would be at one and a half seconds? So could we have one and a half seconds here and have a point here for the rock or whatever it is? And on this example, yes, for sure because time is continuous. It doesn't just jump from zero seconds to one second. You could have one and a half seconds, or you can have 2.2 seconds. So on this particular question, we would have a nice line that would go through all of these points here. And any point along this line would satisfy or make sense in this word problem. But not in this one, because we can't have one and a half flowers, or 2.3 flowers, or 4.1 flowers. So on this graph, we would not have the data points in the middle. We could not have one and a half. We would just have these points right here. So that's a linear relation. Linear relations are points that would lie in a, in a line. And we should be able to take a graph like this and produce a table of values. And then from the table of values, or even from our graph, we should be able to come up with some information about the relationship that exists between the x-axis, or the horizontal axis, and the y-axis, or our vertical axis.